the sound of a train whistle in mountainous Sudhampur at a height of 810 meters above the sea level is nothing short of a dream come true for the people of the region. This is a, this is a, this is a national project and uh, uh, apart from the engineering uh, marvel that it is, it is uh, it, it, it will be expanding the railway network into uh, into Jammu and Kashmir. There's a lot of tourism potential uh, which is there, and a lot of tourists are visiting. Uh, it will be an all weather uh, route where people will be able to uh, commute and go, and the goods and services which the railway offers will be available round the year, irrespective of the kind of weather. So it will be a win-win situation for everybody, for the railways as well as, well as for the people. The extension of the rail network here reflects the dramatic changes taking place in Jammu and Kashmir today, especially with regards to the development of infrastructure for sustained economic development. It is well recognized that the growth potential would be realized only if infrastructure does not become a severe and critical handicap. This is being addressed and an attempt is being made to develop world-class infrastructure essential for speedy industrial development. There is nowhere in the world uh, you will find that broad gauge mountain railway is there. Everywhere there is a small, even in India, we have the Darjeeling Himalayan Railway with the toy train, we call them toy trains. Or the Kalka Shimla, we call it a toy train. Uh, but this is not a toy train. This is a regular train in which the regular kind of uh, railways which you see in the rest of the country where uh, the where Rajasthanis would be running, uh, trains like Rajasthanis, trains like the goods train carrying thousands of tons of uh, essential commodities, the kinds of uh, uh, freight services which will be offering anywhere across the country are will be available here. So the very fact that uh, in mountains we are creating a regular railway is something for the world to, uh, world to uh, which the world will be seeing. And as I told you already, this is, this is one of the biggest projects going on anywhere in the world as far as the challenges it throws up. With the launch of the Uttar Sampark Kranti Express and some other trains on the 55 km long Jammu Udampur track, the ambitious project of connecting the Kashmir Valley to the rest of the country by rail has moved a significant step further. In this project, there are certain far flung areas where probably no construction engineer has ever visited. You will find certain areas where people and villagers have never seen a four-wheeler vehicle, what to talk of a train. When we are constructing excess road in that area in order to construct the railway line and people are over there are really thrilled to see the working people who are reaching there. And imagine when the railway gets constructed and the trains are running over there, the uh, development which is going to take place. It will open up those areas to the other part of the countries. The estimated rupees 11,300 billion Kashmir link that has been taken up as a national project is perhaps the most important project taken up by the railways since independence. Rail connectivity has been extended up to Udhampur and work on connectivity to Srinagar and Baramulla is going on. Once completed, this stretch will surely be a technical marvel with the 11 km long tunnel and 359 meter high bridge over River Chenab, which is even higher than the famous Eiffel Tower. This amount of tunneling has never been done in the history of Indian Railways. So now there are a number of technological methods to do that tunneling. So we have used one of the best, which is the new Austrian tunneling method, NATM, in this longest tunnel which we are using, which has never been used in India so far. And there are other methods also which we have used in tunneling. So depending upon the nature of the work, we have used different tunneling methodologies which have not been used elsewhere in the country so far. When completed, the train link to Kashmir is also expected to open new avenues and opportunities of economic development and social transformation.
whenever a project of this nature is uh, is constructed and it's an infrastructure project infrastructure project means a uh, lot of uh, uh, inputs it also means a lot of benefits and, it, and and the ancillary industries they grow up and the 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 the, the very fact that uh, people are able to becoming more mobile their goods and services will be reaching to the rest of the country around the year uh, so that benefit will come to them and overall they should be they 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 they're definitely going to be a big growth uh, in the economy with this project there may be some time before the train starts sneaking their way up the mountains of kashmir but its skies are already jam packed with nearly five flights from delhi and mumbai landing at shrinagar every day shrinagar being such a extraordinary paradise uh, in fact coming in the into the fly into into the kashmir valley itself is i told my pilot it is a site fit for the gods not for human beings air connectivity is the key to harness the vast potential that the tourism and hospitality industry offers this is especially relevant in the state where tourism is the largest industry and a harbinger of development employment and prosperity to the region Airport facilities in Srinagar, Jammu and Leh today are world class and Srinagar has already achieved the status of an international airport and with it soon begins the catering to overseas flights especially from the Gulf region Aviation Ministry has allowed flights from Srinagar to Dubai Jeddah Muscat Bahrain Kuwait Sharja Abu Dhabi and Tehran It is believed that commercial potential of these destinations would instill new vigor into JNK's growing economic profile Our Tarmic will have the sufficient capability and capacity of giving landing facility to numerous aircrafts and I think you all know we are close to central asia we are close to china we are close to pakistan and our country has a tremendous potential of uh, economic activity in the predominantly mountainous terrain of jammu and kashmir road transport is an indispensable means of communication for the regular distribution of essential and other commodities economic development of the state and access to the landlocked and unexposed areas too are dependent on roads hence the government has given the highest priority to the construction and maintenance of roads road connectivity is a very important infrastructure development program by which the villages are connected the districts are connected the towns are connected and obviously as we all know that construction of new 1 km road into any village enhances the income of that village by 1000 rupees in one year and in that process there is a huge work going on in jnk at present about 1500 kilometers of road under pradhan mantri gramin sadak yojana should be completed by 2008 Border Roads Organization or BRO has made a remarkable contribution by building roads in hostile weather conditions and difficult terrains. The BRO was the brainchild of the late Prime Minister Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru and initially looked after the construction of all major roads in JNK. Later, projects Sampark and Himank were raised for Jammu and Ladakh regions respectively. Today, BRO is responsible for construction, improvement 
and maintenance of all important roads in the valley. We are going to four lane the road from Jammu, passing through Jawahar Tunnel and coming up to Shirinagar. Then we are also four laning the initial portion of the road which is Shirinagar Baramula Uri, which is going up to Gulmarg. After Gulmarg up to Uri, we are going to make it national highway specifications. And from Uri to the command post that is the LOC, we are making a national highway double laning. Today, Jammu and Kashmir boasts of a web of more than 15,000 kilometers of roads knitting together strategically important border areas and urban centers. Emphasis is also being given to the development of rural roads and under the Prime Minister Grameen Sadak Yojna, all the far-flung and remote villages in Jammu and Kashmir will be connected by road by 2009 at the cost of rupees 54,000 million. changes are also visible in the energy sector. The state has tremendous potential for generating electricity which is yet to be fully exploited. It is estimated that it can generate around 20,000 megawatts through hydroelectric power projects. We have a lot of expenditure going on in the power sector. Uh, whether it is your transformation capacity, whether it's your evacuation system, whether it's your receiving station, you know, lots of things are going on in Jammu and Kashmir in power sector. Kashmir did not have transformation capacity earlier on. Even if you are able to buy power from somewhere and take it to Kashmir, you do not have the transformation capacity. Now, transformation capacity is being doubled under PM's package, both for Jammu region as well as for Kashmir region, your transformation capacity is being doubled at all levels, at 220 kb, uh, 220 kb uh, level, 132, every level transformation capacity is being doubled. Harnessing natural water resources could make the state not only self-sufficient in power generation and meet the power requirements for industrial needs, but also an exporter of power. A strong industrial base would tackle the problem of unemployment to a great extent. A number of initiatives, both long and short term, for increasing power generation have been taken to improve the situation. Currently, work is going on on a number of projects in the state, some of which are close to completion. Dulhasti. After 24 long years, the first phase of the Dulhasti hydroelectric project over River Chanab in Jammu and Kashmir is ready to supply 390 megawatts of power. Seva 2, located on River Seva, is expected to generate 120 megawatts of electricity on completion. Kishan Ganga is another important project that will generate 330 megawatts of power. Baglihar is a project on the river Chenab, whose construction began in 1999. It will have an installed capacity of 900 megawatt when complete. 44 megawatt Chutak and 45 megawatt Numo Buzgo projects in Ladakh and 1000 megawatt Paklol Power project are other main producers of energy in the region. It is interesting to note that the day is not far off when Jammu and Kashmir, a chronic importer of energy, would become a major supplier of energy to other Indian states. Dulhasti, if it is transferred to us, which is what we have been promised, would give us 390 megawatts. Baglayar 1 is going to give us 450 uh, megawatts. We already have 300 megawatts of our own. That would stand the state in good stead. At the moment, Jammu and Kashmir is one of the states which is hugely, hugely deficit in power. So the, when these things happen, people's lives will be a little more com uh, comfortable.
tourism sector has traditionally been a source of revenue generation and employment in the state. Jammu and Kashmir, apart from its natural beauty, is also known for its many pilgrimage sites such as Amarnath and Vaishnu Devi. Approximately 5 million pilgrims come every year to Vaishnu Devi alone, generating a significant income for the state. The tourism infrastructure in Jammu and Kashmir is up to the mark and is well equipped to cater to the rush of tourists. to high-range hotels are scattered across the state. Budget and super luxury deluxe hotels with all state-of-the-art amenities are there as well. Uh, the ability of the hotels to cater to large number of tourists has vastly improved. Uh, the, our infrastructure when it comes to transport has also vastly improved. We have very good vehicles available, luxury vehicles available, all kinds of air-conditioned vehicles available for tourists and road connectivity and all other related facilities that are required, be it a prepaid taxi service, be it a Dunga cruise on the lake or any other such facility that a tourist requires, it has vastly improved in these last two years. It also has a whole host of sporting activities on offer. For those looking for some thrills, be it whitewater rafting on Indus or winter sports in Gulmar. Sprawling world-class golf courses in Srinagar, Gulmar and Ladakh have also given a facelift to tourism industry in JNK. Look, Kashmir is, uh, is paradise for the golfers and here there is a lot of potential here. We have a world-class golf course, hai, Royal Springs Golf Course, which uh, is the best in our country or uh, one of the top 10 in the world. Our golf course potential we can organize international events and we are national events. Telecommunications is another key area that is witnessing phenomenal growth and rapid expansion in Jammu and Kashmir. आज के जमाने में कम्युनिकेशन सबसे बड़ा टूल है इंसान के हाथ में कम्युनिकेशन ने ही दुनिया को ग्लोबल विलेज बना दिया और कश्मीरी कम्युनिकेशन के लिहाज से बहुत ही पिछड़ा हुआ था तो जो इसमें उसमें आप खुशी की लहर देख रहे हैं वो इसीलिए है कि उसको लगता है कि नाउ ही इज एट पार विद अदर पीपल ऑफ द वर्ल्ड दीज आर द सीन्स ऑफ ईयर 2003 व्हेन मोबाइल सर्विस वाज इंट्रोड्यूस्ड इन जेएनके फॉर द फर्स्ट टाइम थाउजेंड्स ऑफ टेक सैवी मोबाइल एंथूजियास्ट queued outside the mobile registration offices. Since then, the mobile revolution has taken off in a big way in the state. Stylish mobile phones are available in the markets and have become a fashion statement of sorts among the youth of Jammu and Kashmir. बहुत स्टाइल चेंज हो गया है आजकल के मतलब इस टाइम के मतलब वक्त में के मतलब कंप्यूटर आ गए मोबाइल आ गए गाड़ियां आ गई के मतलब जो भी डिफरेंट बहुत गाड़ियां इस टाइम आ गई हैं और इंटरनेट इंटरनेट आ गया फैक्स आ गया मतलब जो भी बहुत फैसिलिटीज आ गई इस टाइम एंड इट इज नॉट जस्ट मोबाइल्स व्हिच कॉट द फैंसी ऑफ द यूथ इन जेएनके बट ब्रॉडबैंड एंड इंटरनेट हैव आल्सो बिकम पॉपुलर विद जनरेशन नेक्स्ट 
the mushrooming of cyber cafes in the cities is a testimony to this fact. And as far as rural and remote areas are concerned, the community information centers set up by the government have introduced the villagers to the internet revolution as well. And that too for free. The burgeoning telecom and IT industry is definitely proving to be a boon for the youth of Jammu and Kashmir as it has generated employment opportunities. Like Bangalore and Hyderabad, Kashmir is also developing software technology parks. And thanks to investor-friendly economic policies of the government, a large number of BPOs have started operations in the state. As such, uh, where we are working as an offshore office, our internet connectivity is very important because our head office is in the USA, so we have to communicate 24 hours. So, उस लिहाज से जो स्टेट गवर्नमेंट ने प्रोवाइड किया है एसटीपीआई तो दैट इज टू बी प्राउड ऑफ बिकॉज़ उसकी वजह से ही हम काम कर रहे हैं और उसकी वजह से ही हम यहां पे एग्जिस्ट कर रहे हैं तो एज सच में कोई प्रॉब्लम फेस नहीं आ रही है एसटीपीआई इज प्रोवाइड गुड वर्क एंड गुड जॉब फॉर अस दे आर गिविंग द कनेक्टिविटी फॉर द 24 आवर्स उनके साथ हमारी कोई प्रॉब्लम नहीं है दे आर गिविंग अस अ वेरी गुड वर्क जम्मू एंड कश्मीर यूनिवर्सिटीज आर आल्सो ऑप्टिमाइजिंग द बेनिफिट्स ऑफ टेक्नोलॉजिकल एडवांसमेंट्स Today, these universities have tie-ups with foreign varsities made possible by VSAT technology. Now students in the campuses of Jammu and Kashmir can take lectures from professors in London or the US. Video conferencing, internet or computers के माध्यम से ये कोर्स हम चला रहे हैं और जो हमारे students हैं जो participants इस कोर्स में हैं वो अपने ही colleagues जो ईस्ट कैरोलिना में है रशिया में है अलग अलग देशों में यूनिवर्सिटीज में उन्हीं से उनके कल्चर के बारे में जानेंगे और जो रशिया में है और अमेरिका में है स्टूडेंट्स वो जम्मू के स्टूडेंट्स से भारत की संस्कृति के बारे में जानकारी इकबाल लाइब्रेरी इज अनदर शाइनिंग एग्जाम्पल ऑफ मॉडर्नाइजेशन ऑफ द कश्मीर यूनिवर्सिटी All books here have been digitized and the entire library is now just a click away. क्या अभी डिजिटलाइज हो गई हैं सीडी पर आ गई हैं तो हम हम भी इसको अच्छी तरह से यूज करते हैं जो आने वाली जनरेशन है वो भी इनको अच्छी तरह से यूज करते हैं. Like the other parts of India, the youth constitute a sizable chunk of Jammu and Kashmir's total population. These youngsters are confident, dynamic and enterprising. The mushrooming call centers domestic as well as international are bustling with kashmiri youth these days the bpo sector that is unlocking the potential of the youth in the state is fast spreading its wings not only in the valley but also in jammu and ladakh The young blood of Kashmir is clearly adopting to the urban lifestyle and are living life the metropolitan way. It's not just reflected in their penchant towards trendy jobs at plush call centers or multinational chains, but their propensity towards trendy modern music like rock speaks volumes about this transformation and transition. Today, more than 40 rock bands from the state are making the entire country dance to their pulsating music. It is an influence because that's probably just way deep inside my own psyche, so that is going to come out at some point or the other. So, I think we were all very lucky to be there. We were all very lucky to be from Kashmir and like have these kind of influences. And we just hope that we'll use them in the best possible way in the future. 
And that's not all. A small-time singer from downtown Srinagar, Kazi Thokir, has suddenly become the youth icon of the country. He recently made headlines when he was chosen as the Indian Idol on a popular TV reality show in which people from the entire country voted for this young singer from the valley. The advent of call centers and multinational corporations has undoubtedly captured the imagination of the city youth. But joining the armed forces and air force still largely remains the first preference of youth living in the rural and remote areas of Jammu and Kashmir. And to reach out to the youth, both the Indian Army and Air Force regularly organize recruitment camps in the remote and far-flung areas of the state. The response at these camps is overwhelming. Sports is another obsession of Kashmiri youth, whether it is cricket, football or even ice games. Today, more than four fast bowlers from the valley alone are going through rigorous training sessions at the prestigious MRF Pace Academy in Chennai. And one of the boys, 20-year-old Pesar Nabi, is all set to join the national cricket team. Nabi, who hails from a small town of the valley called Sonavar, has already proved his mettle in domestic cricket, delivering the ball at 130 kilometers per hour. The state is not only producing good cricketers, but is also churning out some of the most athletic, agile and talented footballers. Today there are many football clubs springing up across the state, which are nurturing the skills, and some of the clubs have even roped in foreign coaches. Recently, the first Winter Football Championship took place in the Valley. With its energetic youth power, Jammu and Kashmir is one of the fastest growing states in India today. And if this growth continues unhindered, the day is not far when the state will take its rightful place among the most advanced states of the country.